Father, Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, you know, the star of American theatre, and he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. Why don't you stay with Mrs. Hudson? Oh, but Miss Caitlin has more in common with Miss Alice, and they get along so well. Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will... Brains. Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming. <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> Oh, Wilde's already making himself at home. Honestly, the level of narcissism. Honestly, the level of narcissism. Wilde truly has a perfect disguise kit. Do actors really need all this? This must be grease paint. I use the same brushes for makeup. <coughs> oh, face powder of an excellent quality. I forgot my hat. Father? I am just checking, um. You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it uh, might be. Uh, Practicing my disguises, you know me. No, don't, don't touch that! No, no. Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. 
I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes, although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitter's Ball. Mr. Windybank did not wish for me a mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together. But then Father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, Father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until Father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha! A love letter! Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her. A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Good quality paper, quite smooth. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Let's study this letter more closely. 
There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. The stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. Mm, I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm, take my advice, stay at home. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. This letter has a defect. Ah, it's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes! You could have been more diplomatic.
What is going on? Mr. Holmes, is everything all right? Oh, my God. Go back to your flat and stay there with Kate. Calm down, Toby. Now, let's see what this contains. It's ticking. I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. A fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. I have two minutes to defuse it. A source of electricity for the detonation. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode. Whew! What happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? <sighs> Mr. Holmes, are you all right? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five five with black hair and a hair lip. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. tried to kill me, Mr. Holmes. Good job, Toby. JT are the owner's initials. Let's see what's inside. There could be a hidden message that's been written with some lemon juice. No, don't touch anything else. There are ink stains on this piece of paper. I could read the text with the help of my analysis table if Wilde hadn't already destroyed it. A poem. But what does it mean? This isn't a poem. It's a song called Rally Mohawks. That great moment 
when America rebelled against England's dominance. Then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. And I bet they hoisted a tankard of ale and invented a new nation. Along with deciding if this was the week they got to dump some tea into Yon Harbor. <laughs> Why ever did he keep such a song in his pocket? Here it is. That's all I can do for now. Let's try and get a few hours of sleep. How can you sleep when there is someone trying to kill me? How selfish. Oh my, I see you and Kate are best friends already. Did you sleep well, Kate? Very well, thank you, Father. Is that wild? Whatever is he doing now? He's transforming you into a legend. Oh, silly man. Kate, what's the matter? Well, I just came by to tell you that I'm going to the zoo with Alice. We'll be having lunch in town. The zoo? What on earth for? <laughs> Perhaps because it is my birthday today? I'm so sorry, Kate. With Wild's visit, I... Look, here's some spending money. Go and treat yourself to a... a thing. All right. I'll go then. Kate. You never do anything right! All right, all right. Come here. I've had enough of you not caring about me! I do care. I've just had a, a difficult night. Yes, Alice told me about the bomb, but you wouldn't. Kate, I... I only want to protect you. You don't understand anything. I wish Alice would adopt me. Don't be ridiculous. I don't know why my parents entrusted me to you. Did they really know you? Kate, come back. Damn it. Such a waste. This Alice, I have an odd sense about her. It's as if she's playing with Kate's feelings. This would be a good opportunity to investigate Alice's flat while they're absent. And anyway, it'd be better to visit the Green Dragon Tavern during the evening.
Alice has recently used this. It appears that Alice sleeps in this armchair, as uncomfortable as that must be. A soothing drug to aid sleep. It has no smell. has a bitter taste. <coughs> no smell, a bitter taste. It's a tincture of barbiturate. Alice prepared a gift for Kate. She remembered her birthday. Well, women are good at that sort of thing. It looks as though Alice has not slept here for a long time. A phonograph cylinder. Alice's childhood was spent with her aunt, until the aunt's death. Alice was unhappy with all of her adopted families. She's spying on me. Her full name is Alice Floella Hamilton. Strange taste in literature. Sarah de Bouvier is Alice's mother. Alice used her mother's name to lease the flat. Kate probably sleeps here. This lock is quite new. Uh. 
Oh my god. The wheelchair is the same as the one in the photograph above. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. Charles Darwin, English naturalist and geologist. My word, look at this setup. Alice practices spiritualism. Word. Look at this setup. Alice practices spiritualism. Abraham Lincoln. Alice knows about Zacharias Greystoke, the victim from the bowling club. I solved that crime. William Hamilton. Alice is talking with her father, William Hamilton. Distant ancestor Horace Verne. It's my distant ancestor Horace Verne. William Hamilton. But I know him. He was a bandit who I arrested twenty years ago. I finished here. Time to go.
Here it is. I have to be careful in this den of iniquity. Come on, Bobby, push back! Hey, you, shut up! I should be quiet so that I can listen to what people are saying. Let's celebrate! <laughs> Bottoms up. Good beer. Strong. Perhaps I should try it. Let's celebrate! <laughs> There's an illegal gambling den here. I drink to forget that I drink. <laughs> Bottoms up. Damn, the attack on the has failed. I need a refill! Some well. kind of pass for getting inside. I can hear nothing from there. I drink to forget that I drink. <laughs> Remember the edit. 
He was afraid. He ran upstairs. The man with a hem. He could be my attacker. I should find a way Let's to go off. Celebrate. <laughs> Cheers! Bottoms up. Hey, what are you looking for? Get lost. Let's celebrate. Pour me a double. I'm going outside for a cigarette. He has a pass. I could steal it to gain entry. Let's celebrate! <laughs> Cheers! Bottoms up. I need a refill! Let's celebrate! <laughs> you can get in. A treat, just to get a little treat. <laughs> Is the boss at his place? Yeah, he's waiting for you. A man. I should find a way to follow him. The door to the gambling room is there. It's not a gambling room, so get out of here! It's on my side. Be out for a shilling. All in. Ah, it's my lucky. Hey, what do you think oh, you're you doing? That's private. Gamble or get out. Luck is on my side. You loser. All in. I can smell the money. What are you looking at? Be out for a shilling. Make it snappy. You loser. Yeah, I'm gonna win. I have to get across to the other side. Perhaps from there I can reach the guarded area. I have to create a diversion that will move the guard ah, away from the door. Lucky day. Oh, hey, what do you think you're think doing? Fast. That's private. Gamble or get out. You loser. A well-cared-for hat. They allow knives here. 
I bet two gold. Ah, it's my lucky day. I can't go along with that one. A button for a mechanism. He uses the extra cards to cheat. He uses a mirror to look at the cards during the deal. This is a holdout that deals extra cards. The rope leads from one sleeve to the other. The rope's cut, it will release the hidden cards and expose his trick. That's what I'll need to do for a diversion, then I can get outside. Lucky's on my side. Bid up for a shilling. All in. Ah, it's my lucky day. Fool's it snappy. Think faster. Lucky's on my side. You loser. All in. I can smell the money. What are you looking at? Bid up for a shilling. Look at Snappy. You loser. Yeah, I'm gonna win. Luck is on my side. Bid up for a shilling. All in. Ah, it's my lucky day. Look at Snappy. I have to try and go around. You take that! You bad boy! Deck is the ace of spades. 
The man from the gambling room is the same car cheating accessory. Clever invention for hiding gambling items in the event of a police raid. The Hammer. Jack Cole, I remember him from the raid three years ago. Doesn't look like a key from an ordinary door. They only left this room recently. A crack. There might be something behind the cupboard. Late. No. From here it's possible to observe what's going on inside. It's evident that all of these items were stolen by Jack Cole's gang. It's the suitcase belonging to that fellow with the hair lip. No doubt these things were stolen. Our man, most likely with his family. After moving into our new home. This fellow pawned his belongings. He must be in great need of money. Butler's pawn shop in Lambert Street. He apparently lives near this pawn shop. <laughs> What's going on in there? Save Orson. Holmes! You sneaky bastard! I'll kill you!
you... You are Alice, yeah? Listen, Holmes suspects something. What are you talking about? You must be more discreet. Your little game with his daughter... No, no, no! Too soft, Holmes! But... You are Mr. Holmes? Why on earth? You see? She recognized you. And I expected it. You must live the character. You see... Now you go upstairs right away or I will drive you back to that pub. Understood? And there you are. You've got it. I... Uh, <laughs> all right. But seriously, you should take acting classes. I know that you came here to avenge your father. You moved into my building, you've spied on me, and now you prepare your revenge through my own daughter. Don't be such a fool. I adore your daughter. You see conspiracies in everything. I have good reason to. Perhaps you forget what I do for a living. How I pity you. You mistake sincerity for dishonesty. Do you dare tell me that your presence here is accidental? Obviously not. When the opportunity arose for me to meet you, then I came, but not with hatred, rather more with fascination. I had hoped to learn something about my father from you. Some answers as to my identity. When, strangely enough, I find that you yourself are a riddle, even to your own daughter. You shouldn't have involved my daughter in your sick problems. You're only confusing her. It's over. She doesn't know it yet, but I'll be leaving soon. I've finished my business here, and you will never hear from me again. Good. But you better speak to me directly. No being furtive. I had no idea that you could show such a high level of indulgence towards the children of criminals. You... I'm going. Please, I beg you, do not spoil my last moments with Caitlin. Here it is. A suspect with his family near their house.
Good day to you, madam. Good day, sir. I'm here to see your son. Jeremiah? He's not at home now. Might I ask you a few questions about him? Perhaps we could speak inside. I don't know who you are, sir, but I'll have to ask you to leave right away. She won't speak with a stranger. You see, but you do not observe. The distinction is clear. <laughs> it's a good thing that I came to help you at the tavern, Holmes. Actually, I would far rather you stop helping me.
My name is Sherlock Holmes. It is my business to know what other people don't know. Thanks to Wilde, my analysis table has been completely destroyed. Wiggins, could you come up, please? Wiggins, an exorcism. Protocol 2.5 on Lambeth Street. Yeah, you can count on us, Gov. I am the last and highest court of... We're ready, Gov. We're ready, Gov. Someone close the door. I should find a way to attract the attention of Jeremiah's mother. Little rascal! Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. Thank you, Father. You are so kind. Those brats are always causing trouble. Now, where are my manners? Uh, may I offer you a cup of tea as a small thank you? I don't know if... Oh, God bless you, sister. My name is Margaret Thorne. It is an honour that God sent you to me. You appear grieved, sister. Is it because of those children? Oh, no. It is my son, Jeremiah. I fear that he is doing bad things, Father. How bad? I don't know. He has just become nervous and angry and rude. And he used to be such a nice boy. These days he won't spend any time at all with us. Not even with Janet, his younger sister. He hides himself away inside his room and locks the door. And he won't open it for anyone. And where is your son? I don't know where he is. He hasn't come back from last night. I'm so worried. Perhaps his absence is connected with his job. Where does he work? I don't know if he has a job, Father. I've asked him several times, but he just gets angry and won't speak. Perhaps Jeremiah is being poorly influenced by his friends. I wouldn't know. He never mentions any friends. I am afraid that he could be possessed by the devil himself. He's changed so drastically lately. He won't tell me anything and he flies into rages and shouts at me. I don't know what to do. Don't distress yourself, sister. You were right to confess. Truly, I... I can feel an evil presence in this apartment. Oh, God! Allow me to search for the demon in this house. God bless you, Father. Bookcase and books! Possessed wood and words! Expel your literary demons! Ah! Wooden door! Iron handle! Battle the demon! Unholy vandal! Father! It's a demon! Fire and flame! 
games better for crumpets than foul toothed demons? Be gone and bring peace! <laughs> Father, it's a demon! Oh, Holy Spirit, save your pans from demons and poor musicianship! Window! Window frame! I uh, must protect you from demonic pain! Pain! Sister, you saw that the demon has taken shelter in Jeremiah's room. I should go there alone. God save us. Sister, wait for me outside. This fight will be a fierce one. God help us. I'll do what you say. Does he plan to escape from London? A schematic for a homemade bomb. One of the solenoids for creating a bomb. This is evidence enough to put Jeremiah behind bars. This is probably Janet, Jeremiah's sister. It looks as though this letter was torn up in rage. I should reassemble the fragments to read what was written. It appears that Jeremiah received a threatening letter from somebody known as the Dart. The Dart. He was at the center of a notorious case from 1888. It's over. The demon is defeated. Oh, thank you. Bless you, Father. Now, pray for Jeremiah's soul and give thanks, sister. Goodbye. Lord be praised. Goodbye.
is nothing more deceptive than an obvious... Here it is. Bobby, they will find the thing. Good day, Constable. Is Inspector Lestrade here? Inspector Lestrade is back at his office. At your service, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, you're still alive. I can tell that that displeases you. Oh, a faulty deduction for once. Lestrade, I have two suspects in our case, Jack Cole and Percy Fleming. Can you apprehend them? All right, Mr. Holmes, I'll give the order to the constables. Inspector, we have both suspects apprehended. There you are. They're all yours. No need to thank me. How can I help you, Mr. Holmes? Looks like encrypted records. A spintria used in the brothels of ancient Rome. Well, that's rather tasteless. Personalized thuggery. How novel. Expensive cigarettes. Please, escort this suspect for interrogation. A good day to you, Percy the Dart Fleming. Huh. It's the flopper. Flopper? You're aware of what happened to Baker Street the other night. I'd say I'm a little luckier than that. Well, I don't give a fig.
What were you doing two nights ago around 1 a.m.? I was at the White Swan. The White Swan? The brothel that you own. That can't be counted as an alibi. What do I need an alibi for? Does the name Jeremiah ring any bells with you? It's the first time I've heard it. How about this threatening letter that bears your name? Oh, I remember now. A threat? Come on. Just a reminder for him to pay his debts. It's just a small one, and it's a matter of principle. How do you know him? Ah, oh, he's always coming around, begging for odd jobs. But he just talks rubbish. He's off his head. Do you have any business with Jack the Hammer Cole? I have. He sometimes provides my business with goals. But he's stupid. A hot-headed clown. Yeah, I'd be worried about him if I were you. Yes? He told me what you did to his brother, and... <laughs> well, let's just say he hates you. What's this note? I don't know. It was among your belongings. So what? At your service, Mr. Holmes. Please, escort this suspect for interrogation. So, Jack the Hammer Cole, we meet again. Oh, why am I here? Don't pretend that you don't know. You're a suspect in the case of an attempt made on my life. Rubbish. Just like the old days, eh? Arresting me on suspicion. You've got nothing. Oh, no. How about the revenge for the trouble that I brought to your gang? And also your brother. Don't you dare mention my brother. Your brother was hurt. It was a regrettable accident. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I can hardly be blamed for that. What? You bastard. You're the one responsible for him becoming a cripple. He was innocent. An accident, you say? Oh, I can't wait for the moment that you get whacked proper. Quad error demonstrate. <laughs> That's your proof. If I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead already. Do you know what happened at Baker Street that night? I do know, but I had nothing to do with it. And where were you at the time? I was at my tavern all night long. I see. I went to your place and I saw a man with a hair lip arriving to meet with you. What business do you have with him? Business? He's a regular customer, that's all. And what about the suitcase that your regular customer brought to you? What? What are you talking about? Why, the suitcase full of stolen silverware that I found in your secret room? What? How? You search my room. It's not stolen. I often buy a lot of different things and sell them on after. It's all legal. Oh. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> Tell me about the business that you have with Percy Fleming. What? I don't have any business with him. No? Oh. Oh, you supply girls to his institution. He's confessed. Well, he's a liar. Oi, why did you tell them I supply girls to your brothel? Eh? What are you talking about?
Hmm, the text is encrypted. If it's Caesar's shift code, it might be easily deciphered. Elementary. It's a notebook filled with debts, and Jeremiah's name is on the list. Get into the cab, quickly! Follow that cab! I should find a way to get inside. Something moved. I heard something. Stop! Intruder! There was a fight here. Orson attempted to resist, but someone or something convinced him otherwise.
cousins out fighting bobbies and stealing antiques, and what do I get? God. Relax, Mike. You've got to earn it first. How long will that take? Two years, I reckon. The sound of a gong will attract the guards. I need to be careful. Guys, check out that sound! There's someone there! We need to get out of here. Lestrade, I'm glad you're here. What's happened, Mr. Holmes? We've come from the abandoned St. Patrick's Abbey. I uncovered a gang of armed bandits there who did their best to kill me. Again? I'll send our best team to arrest them. Well, I doubt that you'll find anyone left, but if you hurry up, you might just find the spoils left over from their burglaries. I see. And I'll be very grateful if you could keep an eye on Mr. Wilde here. But Holmes! Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Why, please try to remember. Yeah, the slightest detail, etc. Well, apart from the smell of those bandits who kidnapped me, yeah, nothing special. And this Jeremiah was spending his time complaining about working for the fart. I think you mean the dog. Yeah, whatever. Jeremiah said that they should all wait till the fart was released. Uh, makes no sense, right? Mr. Holmes, can we go home? I need a rest. Mr. Holmes, can we go home? I need a rest.
Percy Fleming, you were charged with conspiracy to murder. What? You used Jeremiah Thorne in your little game because you didn't want your hands dirty. You're lying. Jeremiah spoke to me before he died of how you ordered him to throw the bomb and, after its failure, to abduct me. Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. I think that it's perfectly clear. Attacking Mr. Sherlock Holmes is one of the quickest ways to be hanged. Nah, you can't do that. I'm an innocent man. Constable, take him back to the cells. <laughs>